And pleased to be joined now by Ethan Happ, the Big Ten Player of the Week. Each of the last two weeks, he's in our studio in Madison. It's our Tire Pros Campus interview. Ethan, this is a team that returned essentially everybody from last year, nearly 100% of your scoring. How important has that continuity from last year to this year, and then the fact that you've had the same starting lineup every game this year, so the continuity within the season as well, how important has that been to your team's success? Uh, it's been very important. Uh, Nigel actually made a comment on the plane coming home from Illinois how this time last year we were talking about how if we went out we can make the NCAA tournament. If we, I mean, do what we're supposed to do, we can get a good seed or something like that. Um, and now this year it's just completely changed. It's just a year of playing with these guys and um, getting more familiar with each other. You were kind of an under-recruited guy. I mean, ultimately chose Wisconsin over offers from places like Green Bay and Milwaukee. I do know that some of the bigger schools came after you once you had committed, before you had signed. But did the fact that you didn't have recruiters drooling all over you, did that motivate you? Uh, not especially. Um, I mean, I just had a dream of playing Division One basketball. It wasn't about how highly I was touted coming out of high school or anything like that. So. Once I got the offer from Wisconsin, and that is kind of when people started to take notice of me. But I already had my eyes set on Wisconsin and what the program had built and what, what the coaching staff had done with players um, previously of my same skill set and kind of built them up and got them to the next level. So that's kind of what drew me in here. And it's kind of motivating to go to some places um, and know that they didn't even take a look at you, I guess, to answer your question. Anywhere in particular? Uh, I mean, I was I, I was an Illini fan and I was a Michigan State fan. So like going through the handshake line after we beat Michigan State last year was pretty cool. Um, just to see Tom Izzo in person because I was always like watching the Izzo and stuff like that growing up. I know you were also a pretty talented pitcher in baseball. Now the thought of a six foot ten inch pitcher, I think for a lot of people, is somewhat daunting. Uh, tell us a little bit about your game and how you close you came to maybe making a decision to pursue that. Um, I mean, it, it was close. Yeah, baseball is my favorite sport growing up. And having such a high release point for being how tall I am really helped my fastball because I, I couldn't throw that hard. It was like low 80s type deal. So I eventually chose pick basketball and stuck with that in the summers with the AU and stuff just because I felt like that was my best shot to uh, get a scholarship. But uh, I'm thinking maybe after this whole basketball thing's over, I'll, I'll try out my pitching skills again, <laughs> see, see where it takes me. Now, your cousin, of course, is Jay Happ, who's a, a really good pitcher in the major leagues now with the Blue Jays and pitched at Northwestern. Did he critique your game at all, and did you lean on him for advice of what direction should I go with this? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't nearly as good at pitching as I was at basketball, so it, it never really... Um, like came down like neck and neck should I I didn't have scholarship offers for um, bat baseball so but he's helped me with um, some mental stuff in basketball and how to handle pressure situations in basketball so he's helped me in different ways um, outside of baseball let's run through your career a little bit you redshirted as a freshman was that a difficult decision to make at that time and how do you think it helped you uh, it was a very difficult decision to redshirt just because every person coming in thinks they can make an impact and I definitely thought I could but I didn't want to take a year playing seven or eight minutes maybe um, when I knew that I could be more valuable to the team the next couple years down the road and uh, Josh Gosser wanted me to he said kind of selfishly that he wanted me not to redshirt just so I could help that team out a little bit um, but Frank told me that I should redshirt for my own personal benefit and it was, it was a good decision. I mean, that whole year was tough to sit there and watch the team um, go as far as they did, but at the same time, it was awesome. I got a courtside seat to the national championship game, so I can't complain. I know Frank at times was really frustrated with how hard you would play in practice. It basically <laughs> just said, will you back off a little bit? What was the experience like of going against him every day, a guy who ended up being the national player of the year? Yeah, so the biggest thing about a scout team and first team is that after first team plays a game, 
scout team is fresh and ready to go and practice is their game. So, you know, when someone's going 110%, I treated that as my game and then Frank kind of was beat up a little bit from the night before. That's Those are the times where he was, he I would get on his nerves a little bit. But going against him, it wasn't a lot of verbal communication like you need to do this, Ethan, or this will help you out. It was just he would score on me so many times and then block my shot so many times that Eventually, I learned and I picked up some of his moves, and that's kind of how he helped me um, in my game. Where does your toughness come from? Uh, I would say growing up with my brother is definitely, he was two years older than me, so I'm sure this is a lot the same way for a lot of kids who had older, older siblings, but he would beat me in everything, and uh, there were just so many times where I would get so frustrated that I was trying to play with him and his friends. And I was just weaker, and the only way I could, you know, make contribute was just to be the toughest uh, kid out there. The thing that really stands out to me about your game is your defense. I mean, you led the Big Ten in steals last year. You're right up there this year. How did you develop that particular skill? Because it's very unusual for someone your size. Uh, I mean, it developed when I wasn't this size, basically. I was a point guard all growing up, and I would guard the other team's point guard and I would try and pick their pocket basically and um, trying to read passers eyes came from a young age as well so that now that I'm taller and I'm a little bit quicker than most of the big guys that I play against and then just reading a passers eyes making them kind of baiting them into thinking to throw one way and go in the other. Big matchup this weekend against Indiana as you watch Thomas Bryant on film in particular what do you see? Uh, he, he's a hard worker. I mean, him and Caleb Swanigan both work really hard, and I think that's what makes him tough. And uh, he, he's great in transition. He tries to really sprint the floor, so that's a point of emphasis to take away. Um, but I have respect for both of those players, and um, we've had a couple head-to-head matchups, uh, Thomas, Brian, and I, but I think he's, he's really developed since last year, and um, so he's a tough cover for us. Ethan Happ, the reigning Big Ten Player of the Week. Thanks for spending a few minutes with us, Ethan, and best of luck this weekend. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it.